How are you all doing today? My name is Larry Roach. I'm part of the worship team at St. Andrew's Community United Methodist Church. I'm now sequestered in my office. I actually have two offices. Do not ask me why. But I'm here with my wipes, my hand sanitizer, and an abundance of reading material. Bass guitar for dummies. Now, I've had this book going on nine years now and already I'm at page 18. Now, we members of the church, the worship team, and the rest of the, uh, the leadership of the church are trying to stay connected in these trying times. So they asked me to talk to you about a subject um, of my choosing, but it was, what are your favorite Christian songs? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Christian songs that I really, really like, and then afterwards I'm gonna try to have a point about it. Now you may, wonder what I'm doing here not sequestered at home well I'm exempt I'm an exempt person which tells you that the bar for exempt people must be set really really low but I still give me an opportunity to come here and share this message with you now the first song that is really tugged at my heartstrings goes all the way back to my childhood. We lived in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and I had a really good friend, William E. Ginger, G-I-N-G-E-R. And like most kids, uh, about 12, 13 years old, we'd have sleepovers. We didn't have a big house. I mean, you could open the bathroom door or you could open the bedroom door. You couldn't open both of them at the same time. And my mother, to wake us up, you know how teenagers are. They don't get up that easy. She would sing the old rugged cross. Each and every day we had a sleepover. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame. Then she'd pull up the very bottom of the covers and she'd grab our big toes and twist them. And so to this day, as late as yesterday, I called Bill up, he's still in Arkansas, and we reminisced about how the old rugged cross was one of the first songs that we ever really impressed us from a Christian standpoint. Now the point of all that is we as parents, grandparents, whatever, it could be a great opportunity for us to imprint upon our children some type of Christian music or a Christian ethic that lasts for 60 plus years like it did for me. The second song I really, really like is at our church on Christmas, we always light the candles and we do Silent Night. Now there is no, there are probably three songs that have uh, made me shed a tear. Star Spangled Banner being one of them. Taps, the first night I was on basic training and lights were out. And then the uh, third one is Silent Night. The beauty and majesty of that song when we're in the congregation, each of us holding the, the uh, candle, I think is absolutely beautiful. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the congregation. Psalm 101, verse 1, Make a joyful noise, all the earth. Break forth, let your cry ring out, and sing praise. And it didn't say sing melodiously. It doesn't say sing great. It doesn't say be a rock star. It says make a joyful noise, all the earth. And so when we're out there in the congregation, yeah, maybe you kind of embarrassed because you don't sing all that great. I can certainly relate to that. But I will also tell you, sometimes singing can call down the Holy Spirit. I've seen it happen more than once. And when it happens, it's glorious. So let's make a joyful noise and not worry if we exactly hit the right notes over and over again. The next song isn't a Christian song. And this isn't a ukulele. It's actually a bass guitar. And because it's so small, there may be an off chance that I hit the wrong note. That never happens on a full-size guitar, but on this one, it potentially could happen. But a song that has always struck me as godlike is Stand By Me. Okay, now, I can either play or I can sing. I can't do both. But if you listen to the words, when the night has come and the sky is dark and the moon is the only light you see well I won't be afraid no I won't be afraid just as long as you stand stand by me now that's a secular song made most popular by B.E. King but I want to tell you even though it's not on K-Love and it's not sung at the church that much, to me it had a message. And there's two points, but the message, when the night comes, when it's dark, that's exactly what we're experiencing now with the virus. I mean, it's dark and the night has come. And then the moon is the only light you'll see. <laughs> well, where's the moon? It's up in the heavens. And that's where God is. So I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid because I know you will stand by me. And that's the promise that Jesus Christ made us. And he's standing around us all the time. Now another point to that song is we don't have to listen just to religious music. God is all around us. And it goes way beyond even the music. It's everywhere if we look for it. So instead of waiting to be spoon fed, if we actively seek times when God is out there, I think we're going to be a lot better for it. The next one is the simplicity. That repeats over and over again and it's real simple. Well, actually everything about religion can be boiled down to a real simple truth. There is a living God. He sent His begotten Son 
down to us to die on the cross, to sacrifice his life in agony, to be raised again so that if we believe, we will have eternal life. Now that's about as simple as it gets. Now I don't want to say we shouldn't be reading the Bible and studying the Bible, but the basic tenet of everything that's important is real simple. Now I want you to all stay at home, be safe, and I can't wait to see you at church at the first safe possible time. Thank you very much.